Alright, we got a reaction video to Professor Anton. And yeah, I know this is really getting redundant in some of this stuff, but I really think this is the way conversation has to take place. We have to go through each one of these little minutia bits of rhetoric and pick it apart till we get to the core of what people are saying and what we're disagreeing about. What exactly are we disagreeing about? So anyway. Um, so I'm going to do it regarding, you know, you don't like it, I don't watch it. What can I freaking say? Well, you're not watching it. A lot of you aren't watching it. But there's no point in me telling a lot of you that you're not watching it because you're not fucking watching me tell you you're not watching. Damn it. But anyway, on to the show. Useless suffering. I think these describe part of the problem of suffering is that suffering itself can be contextualized and has a meaning. A lot. Yeah, well, this is this is the thing, though. Um, you, you know, you're basically going to argue about that, but I mean, that not it the whole point, though, is to find some way to, to actually create a yardstick we can all sort of apply and make some rationality out of? Like, we all know that I don't think there's anybody who's going to disagree. I mean, if I, you know, take this hook and hook my eye with it, it's going to hurt like hell. It's going to be nasty kind of suffering. And, um, you know, I mean, we can all have some common describers that we can put on this scale and say, yeah, I know that color. I know that color. And, and so we, have, we can have common reference points for what kind of suffering we're talking about. And let's, let's concede this is a real limitation of the language that we don't have words like blue, green, red, pink. You know, we don't have words... Um, to describe the nuance of these different kinds of suffering. You know, there's emotional suffering, and there's physical suffering. There's long-term suffering. There's short-term suffering. We really need more words, but the words were just never made. Life that would be free of all suffering may not necessarily be the most desirable life or a life. Well, I guess, yeah, of course. Well, if, if, if desire is suffering, as some Buddhists might argue, um, yeah, of course. Uh, no desire, there's no point in living, okay? No incentive, you know, no point. No point in spinning your little wheel in your little hamster cage if there's no desire to do it. Um, so, yeah, you got to have the, the illusion of the cheese. you got to be in the chase uh, to accept the pain of the chase. You gotta have the desire to make any suffering meaningful to you. Um, but this is sort of where we get into this whole thing, because there's a second argument here. Not just what suffering is, but what compensates for it. And whether desire is actually a compensator, or whether that is a delusion of our brain that makes us incapable of seeing the real value of the suffering, because the desire consumes us. And then we become... Um, incapable of making a rational judgment. And I've used the argument just like a heroin addict who would be living a life that is by any rational description futile and stupid. Life even worth wanting. It could well be that technologies of comfort and ease and convenience and medicines that are able to relieve and remove all forms of pain and all forms. Oh, please! I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know what sick person you have communicated with that has that personal experience, where they go to the doctor and the doctor removes all their pain and suffering and misery, and they're perfectly happy with the giant brain tumor growing in their head. I mean, what a crock of shit! So why gild the lily? Why fucking over-argue the point? That's obviously an over-argument. There is no such technology in existence now. Um, it, you know, there's, still, there's no immunity to suffering available to human beings. All right? Not, not, not if they still want to be here. I mean, you get immunity if you drug them up enough and they won't even know who the fuck they are. I don't think that counts as, as uh, what you described as uh, this wonderful society that's given us this perfectly, um, this liberation from the burdens of unpleasant sensation. Uh, not true. Forms of suffering may do an ultimate injustice to humanity. Now, I'm not suggesting... Oh, God, that sounds like some kind of Mother Teresa nonsense.
Oh, Jesus loves your pain. He feeds on it. He eats it for dinner every night. So suffer away because you're making Jesus happy. I mean, <laughs> come on. Uh, let's see what you're not suggesting. It might be interesting. In that people want to embrace pain, want to embrace suffering, but the question is, how do we contextualize suffering? Are there certain kinds of suffering that can be offered as a hymn, as a shaping stone for self-cultivation? Um, yeah, well, isn't that the, like just saying that, uh, well, it doesn't kill you, build your character. Uh, you know, makes you better um, if it doesn't kill you. Uh, yeah, there's lots of ways we can look at this thing. I mean, if you're a soldier, you're going to have a certain mentality. You're going to be driven. You'll accept, oh, I got a little bit of a bullet thing happening. I got some fungus on my feet, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be killing those fuckers. So, ah. And so you get into a, a mode of life where, yeah, okay, you'll take the slings and arrows because you have a friggin' mission. Um, so, yeah, you can mission-orient yourself and say, yes, the life thing is worth it, so I'll endure the cancer, and I'll endure the chemo, and I'll endure the liver transplant, and I'll endure the bloating, and I'll endure the impotency, and I'll endure this, and I'll endure that, because my grandchild wants me to rub its little head and say, there, there, or whatever your fucking thing is, whatever bizarre scales of balance you have come up with. Um, yes, fine. But you're saying that th th this is not, your, your focus is, the strategy is do whatever you have to do to make it fun and successful in terms of your survival. My argument is, well, why don't you look at it and see if it's worth it, all right? Why don't you look at what a heroin addict is and see, is that what I want to be? Is that the life I want to live? Do I want to be a peasant in Bangladesh working his ass off to try to su just survive? So, so what? To accomplish what? To live like shit so he can see the sunrise? Oh, please. There seems to be different ways of responding to the fact that human life is filled with suffering. For example. Yes, uh, and one of the rational ways of responding is, holy shit, that's goddamn fucked up. Why would you, you got this sentience thing and nature doesn't give a fuck about it. There's no God that created it. So obviously it's just that nature made it. It's this stupid vulnerability. It has no brain to take care of the vulnerability. It's a sloppy mad scientist experiment. Dr. fucking Frankenstein. Uh, yeah, let's make the thing, put it in a horrible circumstance, and then have it chased with torches and pitchforks for just being what it is. I mean, that's the circumstance we're in. You want to contextualize that? Uh, there's no context to it. It's stupid. It's pointless, wasted suffering. It's an inefficient, unengineered civilization. And we have to do a hell of a lot better than this because we have piles and piles, billions of sentient creatures living in shit. And it's not good enough. Not by a long fucking shot. Someone might just, as we already suggested, focus on their body and selfishly try to remove themselves from all forms of pain, all forms of anguish, all forms of suffering, and may try to, perhaps in a drug-like stupor, bring themselves into a life of complete convenience, comfort, ease. I don't even think that happens. I mean, there's, you, know, you know, it's really hard to maintain that perfect a drug-induced stupor. Okay, you come down, you hit rock bottom, you hang over, you do a lot of fucking burnout. I mean, there's a lot of fucking reper repercussions. That's a temporary solution to a pretty, you know, lifelong problem. So that ain't exactly the, the panacea for anybody. Those people aren't winning the battle. Even if you thought they were cheating, it wouldn't matter because their cheat is fail. They've cheated with the wrong answers on the goddamn test. So that doesn't get anybody anywhere. So it's not even something to argue about because they don't, they're not, it's not even the right answer. It doesn't solve the friggin' problem either. That would be one way of trying to handle the threat of life and life suffering. Another strategy would be to try to alleviate all of the suffering uh, throughout the world and to try to end the suffering. 
Um, yeah, or even just bite it off one piece at a time. Try to end the suffering of the asshole you just ripped off, or the, some other person that you took advantage of, or just the little ways you can you can alleviate it in your own existence by not eating a friggin' hamburger. It's not that hard to alleviate it. I think many people come to realize that the more that you become aware of suffering, the more that you realize that there's many kinds of suffering and it's on multiple fronts. So then the strategy becomes, how do I meaningfully deal with suffering, my own suffering and the suffering of others? What? Yeah, well that's really the issue. And, and yeah, do you cure the disease or, you do, or do you treat the symptoms? Do you fix this, the one man's suffering or do you fix the hundred people bread, teach the people how to fish suffering? Uh, you know, these are, these are all the equations that we're facing. Lots of different equations. Uh, but the real problem is, is that nothing me or you as individuals do is likely to have the big payoff. The big payoff can only come from communities, from groups, from things with power. Power has to do something. We have to make power do something. Uh, the powerless, the individual, can only do tiny little things um, that certainly have value. But in comparison to the problem, it's a little value. It's, a, it's a one brushstroke on a gigantic house. One is to joyfully participate in the sorrows of humanity. Wow, now that makes a lot of sense. Joyfully participate in the sorrows of humanity. Don't worry, be happy. Yeah, uh, that is even worse than the person who selfishly escapes with drugs. That has to be the most selfish, useless, idiotic way of approaching what life is. Uh, life is um, so much more than contenting your little brain with the circumstance. It is making the future. That's what we're here doing right this fucking minute. We're making the fucking future. And if everybody's whistling... I forgot what I'm supposed to care about because everybody isn't me. I'm only going to consider me, 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 me. And I'm not going to worry about them and them and them. You know, fuck that shit. That's not the answer. It's to recognize that suffering is inevitable. And then the task is to find meaningful ways to make one's suffering a contribution to other... Oh, please. Suffering is inevitable. So you really believe that? Uh, all suffering is inevitable. We can't get rid of the extremes. We can't get rid of the worst of it. We can't get rid of the bulk of it. It's all inevitable. Okay? See, this is where the words are just abused. This is where the concept is abused. First, you argue... Well, you know, there's some kind of sufferings we need or we won't know what good is because we won't know what bad is. Okay, valid point. And then you take that point and you pervert the hell of out, out of it to say, now, now you're saying we need all suffering. All suffering is inevitable. Bullshit. ...into the larger world. The fear is that people will engage in a kind of sacrifice and suffering and if they believe that life here is a test, you have everything from the suicide bomber to the terrorist. Oh, get real. Look, the suicide bomber and the terrorist, they're political operatives. They're soldiers in a war. They're only doing what the soldier, a rational thing a soldier does. 99% of these people don't give a shit about God or any of these promises or any of this other bullshit. So quit playing that game. They're kamikazes. Okay, they, they believe in something. They believe in the mission. Okay, that's all they do. They just believe in the mission. It doesn't go any further than that. They believe that's friggin' the enemy, that's Frankenstein, I'm gonna take him fucking down. Okay, that's all they believe in. They believe in, my kids are fucking dead, you fuckers did it, I'm gonna fucking cut your fucking legs off. That's all they're thinking, that's all they're doing. So quit pretending it's something else. They're just being goddamn good soldiers. The person who's willing to suffer and bring hardship upon themselves all in the name of some greater mission to which they sacrifice themselves. Yes, and nothing wrong with that. That's, that's, being, that's what I call character. <laughs> okay? If you believe it, if you know it, 
if you at least have had the, you know, you look, should be damn sure you're doing it for the right goddamn reason. But yeah, if you're in a fucking war, if I'm in war with goddamn Nazis, and I know they're fucking horrible, murdering, bigoted jackasses, and they're a threat and a, they're, they're the doom of the human race, then that's right. I'm gonna be, if I'm gonna be a good soldier, then yeah, my mission is cut that fucker up. All right, cut them down, rip them up. This is a, a genuine fear and it's a cost that comes from people's need for meaning in light of the fact of trying to contextualize their suffering. It's a way that it's they... It's not about contextualizing their suffering. It's about dealing with a world that has problems in it, identifiable threats and problems. Okay? This is not utopia. Okay? It's shitopia. All right? In shitopia, people have to fix things because they can't if they have any brain at all that's their instinct if they're sitting in a fucking cesspool they're going to say fuck this shit let's figure out how to get out of here and if they find out that there's some hand pushing them into the fucking cesspool well then their mission's going to be to cut that fucking hand off they try to handle their suffering by making suffering meaningful putting it in that context the question then becomes... Well, now, look, deal with the real world suffering, the bulk of suffering. Deal with the six-year-old kid with leukemia, all right? Deal with something real, not this phantasmagorical suffering. Deal with the fucking day-to-day -day real life shit that happens to human fucking beings and how we should rationally deal with that suffering. Or even deal with your goddamn dinner, the suffering that puts your dinner on the table. Deal with that. What are the ways of meaningfully handling suffering but minimizing the terror and the damage and the suffering that one brings to others? How does one do that? I think what one does Well, is look, there's lots of free fixes out there. Not every undoing of suffering requires suffering, okay? It really doesn't work that way. What it might require is just saying that, yeah, I won't waste the extra money. I'll do the right thing. We all know it's out there. I mean, every cent I spend is terribly inefficient and selfish in a lot of ways because I know for the friggin' money, for $50, I can, I can buy a human being immunity from the disease that will kill him in Africa. I know it, okay? I, I can stop a guy from getting malaria with 50 fucking bucks. So that's the real equation we're all living with. There's a huge, preposterous amount of suffering out there. But a lot of it can be fixed, not by us suffering, but by us simply sacrificing something. Some minor suffering to, to heal a huge suffering. But it requires us to be, you know, something, something, it requires us to be able to be um, capable of giving up a, a piece of our desire. And that's the real issue here. What is the, what is the strongest motivating factor inside a human being? And it is this desire, this want, this need. That's the obstacle. One sacrifices oneself for beauty incorruptible. You have to. Uh, beauty incorruptible. I mean, oh, God, I hate that word. Uh, on a subjective, personal level, beauty is the most important thing in the world to me. But it has no philosophical meaning because everybody's definition of beautiful is different. I mean, it's just as... Stop using this word in a philosophical context because it can't really mean anything. I think sacrifice yourself to cultivate yourself. That is, to grow a self worth wanting, you'll have to slough off old skin and it will be painful. No, see, that's another argument I'll make to you. Yeah, there's this whole thing that, you know, we have to go through this whole process, you have to learn through your experience and everything else. But a lot of it you would, wouldn't have to go through. There's a hell of a lot of shit I wouldn't have to go through if somebody would have just told me the fucking truth 40 years ago. I mean, it would have been done me a great favor. I would have saved a hell of a lot of time if somebody would have just verified uh, to me when I was 10 years old that, yeah, human beings are assholes, man. They are just fucking assholes. Selfish little stupid monkeys. I mean, they're not better than monkeys. Uh, all right? I mean, that would have been a huge benefit to me just to have that validation of my uh, initial um, impression 
And so there are shortcuts, and this communication thing can create those shortcuts. We can go through the ideas and people can see what, what might have taken them 10 years to conceive on their own. They get the conception of it, and then they can just say, it's like puzzle pieces. If you show the goddamn asshole the picture of the finished puzzle, sometimes it's really easy for them to put the puzzle together. But if they don't know what their, the puzzle is, then it's really hard to do the puzzle. So, yeah, the... Ugh. No, we don't all have to go through the horror to understand the horror. We can convey it to each other through this medium, through communication. We can convey it. We can make it understood. Uh, I mean, maybe not every smell, maybe not every nuance, but we can get the substance of it into somebody else's brain without them having to experience it. Well, discipline practices, cultivations of talents and skills, the way that an artist or an author or a painter, uh, a sculptor, a dancer, uh, an, an athlete, a social activist, any of these people who actively try to make a difference in the world and try... Oh, please. The 99.99% .99 of them are trying to make a difference in their world. Okay? It's an ego feast. Um, it's, it's, you know, they're not doing it for the people, for humanity. No, they're doing it because they need to be vital. They need to be something. They need to be something. Uh, I'm not being dishonest by saying, yes, that's what that it feeds. It, it drives me also, okay? It drives my own self-esteem. But that's what they're chasing. So let's not, let's not again pervert and, and, and distort what is a a psychological manifestation and what is a manifestation of some philosophical principled understanding we can make distinctions between these two things and we can say things about we can we can say I'm an asshole okay without it being a psychological experience where some oh I just called myself an asshole now I'm going to react like an asshole because that guy called me an asshole no we can philosophically understand <sighs> damn it try to cultivate themselves, they will have to endure forms of suffering and forms of hardship. The question is, is the beauty released? Is the social good released? Oh yeah, okay, so let's say I spend 15 years hitting baseballs every day and the baseballs hit me in the head and they you know, I break my arms and I go through all this crap to become the greatest baseball hitter in the world. I'm doing that for mankind? Come on. Uh, you know, come on, please, bullshit, I call bullshit. Worth the suffering. Everyone has to suffer. Can you convert your suffering into a hymn? How do we call A hymn? Why do you have to use this stupid word laced with bullshit reverence to nonsense? Jesus loves me as he does. Why would I want to convert my suffering into a hymn? No, I'd want to convert it into something substantial. Not just a monument, not just a facade. I would want it to be substantial. I would want it to be a really a productive piece of work. Not just a piece of facade, not a piece of slop. I mean, a hymn is slop. Cultivate the capacity to recognize suffering as something that perhaps is inevitable, and we try to minimize it. Again, well, there's no point in saying inevitable, we try to minimize it. Well, it's one or the other, really. Come on. Uh, yeah, let's just focus on the trying to minimize, and let's just forget the inevitable part. Because maybe not any of it's inevitable. Maybe we'll find out when we start cutting it down and cutting it down and cutting it down that we can keep cutting. And where we can't get rid of it, we see it as an opportunity for growth. There's a line... Oh, please. Like I said, what are you going to grow on a six-year-old kid with cancer? What the fuck are you going to grow on that but a tree of... What the fuck is this bullshit? That's the only tree that's going to grow on that. Is complete contempt for the silly, idiotic rules we have to play this game of life by. I mean, you want to acquiesce to the rules? Well, that's your fucking choice. Okay, that's a decision you have to make for yourself. Um, but we really have to make this thing more of a choice. Uh, the only people who should be living are people who see that value, who see the possibility of growing something productive on a, 
a dead six-year-old. And the people who can't see anything productive that you can grow on that but a bitter, 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 bitter tree of shit um, should have the right to say, don't play with my consciousness. Don't bring me back into your silly game. Don't throw me back in this arena uh, to keep playing this nonsense over and over and over again because you think you people are accomplishing something. Because you people keep trying to grow, you're growing some kind of whatever on all this, these corpses. That's your business. Um, but to me, it's, it's, it's intellectual mush. Okay, it's only made out of psychological babble. It's only made out of, out of your desire, your intense fucking desire is compelling you to ignore the price being paid. And so now you're going to call the suffering a hymn, or you're going to call it a monument, or you're going to call it a, well, make the best of it, or, you know, it's a best, make the best of it, Bush. <laughs> and it's bullshit. Uh, in the Wisdom of the Sands by Santex, where he says, you know, if I send prisoners out and I tell them to break stones, it is a burden and they feel the labor. But that exact same activity, when done by the sculptor, becomes a way of transcending himself. This Transcending himself. No, he's just expressing himself. Um, and yeah, I mean, you could, you, could, you know, it would probably make more sense to have people in prison doing the same thing, expressing themselves. They might as well. It's both work. I mean, let's not pretend. Uh, but maybe you got some sculptures and you got some people that are competent in prison. Uh, but the act of sculpting itself out of a talented hand, it's, what's the difference? If somebody doesn't know how to do it, or they don't have the skill to do it, what the fuck's the difference whether they're breaking stones or sculpting stones? It's still going to be shit at the end. <laughs> this notion that sometimes people are able to transcend their lot and endure suffering because they realize that that suffering has a purpose and it Ugh, transcend again, transcend, 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 where? Where transcend to what? You either are productive as a human being or you're not productive. We want to call that the line of transcendment, okay, is where you transcend being a, a, a consumer and then become a producer. Is, is that it? A producer that way, consumer that way, right? Uh, so is, is that it? So we can call that the line of demarcation where you go from asshole to transcender because you go from consumer to producer, net producer. Yeah, bravo, fine.